Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. The Manchu people are a diligent, brave, and intelligent ethnic group. Known for their ability to absorb and innovate upon foreign cultures. Throughout Chinese history, they have not only preserved their own traditions but also actively blended with other cultures. Adding unique colors to the rich tapestry of Chinese civilization. Manchu girls were historically renowned for their robust physiques and exceptional courage in battle. They could shoulder family and societal responsibilities while mastering horseback riding and archery, even taking up arms on the battlefield. This fearless and capable demeanor left an indelible mark on history. However, the fate of Manchu women underwent significant changes after the establishment of the Qing dynasty. Those who entered the imperial palace lost the freedom to gallop across the grasslands. Replaced instead by the rigid rules of court life. They were forbidden from casual interactions with men, even normal conversations were prohibited. And their lives were confined within the intricate web of palace rituals and regulations. What's more startling is that these once healthy and strong Manchu women often appeared frail after entering the palace. Observers frequently noted that after being summoned by the emperor, they would struggle to walk the following day, needing the support of maids just to move around. Could the opulence and strictures of palace life have such a profound impact on their health? This question gives much food for thought. Historical Insights on Manchu Women According to historians, women in traditional Manchu society held a status far higher than many might imagine. They were not only vital pillars of their families but also actively participated in labor and played indispensable roles in political, cultural, and even military spheres. This distinctive status was closely tied to the nomadic economy of the Manchu people. Nomadic life demanded that every individual, regardless of gender, be capable of handling various responsibilities independently. Compared to the relatively confined roles of women in agrarian societies, Manchu women enjoyed greater independence and importance. A reflection of the unique charm of nomadic culture. A classic example from Nurhasai's era. A well-known historical example dates back to the time of Nurhasai. In 1583, the young Nurhasai raised an army against his enemy, Nikan Wailan. Remarkably, among the forty warriors defending Nikan Wailan, many were women. These female warriors fearlessly fought alongside men, their combat prowess on par with their male counterparts. Their heroic figures, drawing bows and wielding weapons on horseback, vividly showcased the courage and strength of Manchu women. Such fearless displays added legendary tales to the Manchu homeland of that era. The Transformation of Manchu Women's Lives the vibrant and free lifestyle once enjoyed by Manchu women underwent drastic changes when the Qing dynasty took over China. In 1644, the Qing army crossed the border and established a unified multi-ethnic empire. To consolidate power, the Qing court implemented policies such as Manchu-Mongol intermarriage and promoting close relations between the Manchu and Han people. While these policies ostensibly aimed to foster ethnic unity, they were, in reality, strategies employed by Qin rulers to address the uncertainties of power. The relatively small Manchu population, coupled with the complexities of the Han scholar official class, forced the Qin rulers to adopt various means to balance different forces, with the policies of the imperial harem being a key tool. The role of the imperial harem. In this context, the political function of the imperial harem became significantly heightened. The emperor relied on the harem to mediate among Manchu, Mongol, and Han factions to secure his rule. Thus, Manchu, Mongol, and Han consorts alike were required to center their lives entirely around the emperor upon entering the palace. These concubines not only had to abandon their original identities but also fully adapt to the court's rituals and way of life. This institutional arrangement profoundly affected their personal destinies and reshaped the power structure and cultural ecology of society as a whole. For Manchu women, this transformation was particularly drastic. 
from the unrestrained and free-spirited life of the grasslands. They were forced into the strict confines of palace rules, where every detail of their lives was meticulously controlled. Their clothing, diet, housing, and even the way they walked had to comply with rigid court etiquette. This dramatic shift from a nomadic culture to the highly regulated palace culture left many Manchu women struggling to adapt. They not only endured physical and mental exhaustion but also faced immense psychological pressure. Once strong and unrestrained on the grasslands, these women found themselves confined by palace rules and etiquette, suppressing their natural instincts. This stark contrast drained their vitality, leaving them burdened with profound loneliness and helplessness. Under the shadow of imperial power, the harem became a labyrinth of complex power struggles. Consorts had to navigate not only the emperor's favor or indifference but also the overt and covert rivalries among other concubines and the threats and exploitation from eunuchs. Under such relentless pressure, once healthy and spirited Manchu women gradually became weakened, losing their strength and vitality. Their lives were fraught with unease and risk, where even minor missteps could lead to demotion, punishment, or the grim fate of execution. In this environment, harem women began to deliberately craft an image of frailty and helplessness to align with the emperor's aesthetic preferences and palace expectations. A slender waist, graceful steps, and a nearly sickly beauty became the standards they strived to meet. Behind this pursuit of beauty, however, lay unspeakable physical and psychological torment. To maintain this unhealthy aesthetic, they resorted to extreme measures, strict dieting to maintain a fragile figure, using harmful cosmetics to mask fatigue, and even consuming harmful substances to create a pale, delicate appearance. This distorted pursuit severed the once vibrant Manchu women from their health and vitality. Moreover, life in the harem distorted more than just their physical appearances. The lack of exercise, monotonous or unhealthy diets, coupled with frequent pregnancies and childbirth, further deteriorated their health. Even more critically, the immense psychological stress weighed heavily on them. They had to tread carefully every day, maneuvering within the constraints of etiquette and rules. Knowing that a single misstep could lead to irreversible consequences. When women in the harem needed assistance just to walk. It was no longer an act of feigned delicacy but a true reflection of their lived reality. Once strong, healthy, and battle-ready. Manchu women became victims of the palace's oppressive pressures and rigid rules. Like Jia Yuanchun in Dream of the Red Chamber. Even women of noble birth could not rely on their families for support within the harem. They had to depend solely on their intelligence and abilities. This isolation forced them to quickly familiarize themselves with the palace environment and learn to navigate the power struggles to survive. Some astute concubines soon realized that while beauty and talent were important, they were not decisive. What truly determined their fate was the wisdom to handle relationships with the emperor and other concubines. They learned to observe the words and actions of others, discern the emperor's thoughts, and carve out a position for themselves within the complex web of palace power dynamics. This survival intelligence manifested in their ability to use limited resources to win the emperor's favor and even secure a foothold in the harem's power structure. Thus, Manchu women were forced to conceal their true selves, becoming masters of palace scheming. Their once outgoing and straightforward nature was suppressed, replaced by a cautious and calculating approach to life. This transformation profoundly impacted their psyche, leaving them to endure indescribable suffering. Some historians have remarked that the journey of Manchu women from standing proudly on the windswept grasslands to being imprisoned in a gilded cage represents not only personal tragedies but also a reflection of their nation's struggles amid profound societal upheavals. This is the History and Culture Channel. Liking and subscribing are the greatest help and support to us. Thank you everyone and see you in the next time.